all of you to our first very virtual um, open house we've ever hosted. So we are pretty excited about what's um, going to happen today. Um, ideally, we would love for you all to be here to experience um, the Powerline program, the WNCC Powerline Construction and Maintenance Program um, in person where you might have the chance to climb poles and, and be in the bucket truck and do all sorts of fun things. But unfortunately, COVID is not allowing us to do that. So I think the next best thing we can do is have it um, virtually and, and showcase um, some of our students here from Shane Homan, our instructor, and Quentin, who is our teaching fellow um, about the program. So I'm just thrilled you're here. But before we get started, um, could our guests um, use the chat feature and just tell us your first name and where you're from so we have an idea of um, who you are and, um, and be able to put some words, I guess, with your almost non-existent face. Um, but before we get started, um, our students, our faculty, um, the admission staff um, have been working hard to present this to you. So I do want to introduce everyone. Shane Homan, as I said, is our, our Powerline instructor. Quentin is our teaching fellow, um, works side by side with Shane. Um, Cole Honstead is our producer, and he will be moving you from one breakout room to another. Uh, Conniger Stumpf is um, our cameraman and uh, Jolene Martin will be managing the chat master and Debbie Wagner will be our MC. Please note that you will have an opportunity to um, ask questions at the end of the demonstrations or any of the presentations. And we would love for you to do that. Um, but note at the end of our program, we will have a student panel to do some questions and answers live. Um, and Debbie um, will, um, be our MC, and I'm going to turn it over to Debbie so she can share how our day is going to work. All right, so good afternoon, everybody. My name is Debbie Wagner. I am the admissions, or one of the admissions counselors here at Western Nebraska Community College, and I'm outside our Powerline um, lab right now. Um, as you can tell, it is pretty chilly out here today. So while we had hoped to have all of our um, activities done outside in our main power line lab, um, we're gonna be doing a majority of them from inside um, the um, indoor lab, which is gonna be great. Um, we have several really cool activities for you guys to watch today. Uh, we have a pole climbing demo. They're gonna give you instructions and information about the different gear that you use and some tips on how to um, climb the pole safely. Um, we're also going to maybe just try and get them to do a race so that we can see how fast they um, can get up those poles after just a few short uh, months of training. Uh, we have an industry outlook where we'll have somebody from the City of Alliance coming in to speak with, um, speak with you about the job outlook. And then we're going to do a pole top rescue so you can see, heaven forbid, there should be an emergency, but you have to be aware of that. So we're going to show how that gets done. Um, I'm going to get up myself up in the bucket truck a little bit later on and give you a bird's eye view so you can kind of get a feel and a sense of what it would feel like if you were up at the top of the pole, which would be really fun. We'll come back to Gretchen and she'll give you the admissions presentation with all of the requirements that are needed and some basic information on how you can get a, a power line packet and get um, applied for um, the Powerline program. And then at the end, we'll have a student panel where we'll have uh, five of our current Powerline students that are be able to speak with you and answer any, any of your questions that you have. So some really quick housekeeping information. Please keep both your audio and your video disabled. Um, we want to make sure that we're focusing on the right thing at the right time. So if you can please do that. If you have any questions, please use the chat feature. Uh, Jolene will be monitoring that so that we can get your questions asked. Um, the, if you can enable speaker view, on your Zoom, it will work best for this presentation. So on the top right hand side, um, you should see an option to um, click on gallery view or speaker view. So make sure you have it in speaker view to get the most out of the presentations today. You're currently in the main room of what we'll be doing, which is basically where you'll be seeing me. Um, but our producer Cole will be putting you out into breakout sessions so that you can see the different activities and move around with them as, as they go. So if it just says, move to the breakout session, just click on that on that yes, and we'll get you moved over. 
Again, if you have any questions, please just write them in the chat box. We want this to be as fun and engaging as possible, guys. So please let us know what you're thinking as we're doing the presentations. If there's something specific that you want to know, feel free to chat it in there um, so that we can get those questions answered at that time. But also remember that after every presentation, we're going to have a Q&A session um, so that then you have time to ask a little bit. Um, if, you, if you're just so enthralled with what you're seeing and you need to wait till the end, we got time for that too. All right, so last minute, this whole presentation should take about an hour and a half, hour, hour and a half. Uh, again, we encourage you to be as um, engaged as possible and uh, please be respectful in your chat and in your comments. Um, you know, this is open to everyone. And then also, please be a little patient with us. As Gretchen said, this is our first time. So we're super excited to do this, but if we have glitches along the way, we'll get it figured out, just bear with us. So right now, what I'm gonna do is Cole is gonna um, send us over into our first breakout room where you're gonna get to see um, a demonstration on a pole climb with Dalton Frost and um, some pole races that'll be happening with um, El Elton y Yarger and Trent Mount. So go ahead and take it away, thanks. Everybody uh, connect into the breakout room, and then I'm going to introduce Shane Homan, our instructor over here, and he will take it away. Hi, everybody. Shane Homan, powerline instructor here at Western Nebraska Community College in Alliance, Nebraska. I'd like to welcome you to, to our virtual open house today. I uh, appreciate everybody joining us, and uh, I'd like to welcome you actually to our indoor training facility. This was built a couple years ago. Uh, so that we didn't have to slow down during inclement weather. And it's a little bit windy and rainy here this afternoon. And so this is a good opportunity to showcase this indoor lab as well. I have one of our students with us today, Dalton Prop. Dalton is, is from Scottsbluff, Nebraska. And uh, he's one of the five that we have today. We also have a gentleman named Tyler Lentz out of Scottsbluff. Uh, Chandler Stinson from right here in Alliance. We've got Elton Yarger from Stratton, Colorado and Trent Mount from Brush, Colorado. And I'd like to just personally thank those five gentlemen for helping us out here today, staying late after class. Uh, they all have done a great job here in this program through the first semester and a half. And Dalton's gonna go ahead and demonstrate uh, how to inspect our equipment, talk a little bit about the equipment that we use, talk to you about the weight uh, that you have to carry as you're climbing, and he's going to do just a brief demonstration, probably go up the pole about 15 foot for you. So I'll go ahead and turn it over to Dalton. All right, guys, I'm going to show you guys some of the gear that we use here. Uh, well, first off, starting off, you're going to need a good pair of boots. Uh, there's a million different kinds you guys can get, but I went with some cheaper Carolina ones, and they've proved me pretty good so far. Then these here are your climbers. Uh, here's your gap points here. Uh, you always be maintaining these, keeping them sharp, making sure they're at the proper length and don't get too short. Checking all your screws on them, making sure everything's good and tight. And then we'll just go ahead and put these on. Then these are your gap guards here for when you're walking around so you don't hit a rock and uh, make this point dull. That'll affect how you climb. Then you also inspect your buckles and stuff while you're putting them on and making sure there's nothing broken or loose. How often do you have to maintain or sharpen your spikes for the gaffs? Um, so far, I've, I've probably only done it three times in the two semesters. Since we're in the second semester here, starting on the first one. So it just depends on how, how you climb and how you take care of them when you're walking around, having your gaff guards on them. Are there a lot of different types of gaffs out there? Uh, there is. Uh, metals made of different materials, different kind of pads. I have leather pads here with buckles on them. Some they have are Velcro. If I could do it again, I would probably get Velcro ones with a lot of aluminum climbers instead of steel. And here's your belt. It weighs with all your tools and stuff on it. 20, 25 pounds a gear all together. So what are, what are some of the tools that you always want to make sure you have? So the basic tools you're going to use every day and bring up the pole with you is going to be 
a screwdriver here, usually with metal on the end of it, because we mainly use it for driving into the pole, hanging a hand line, more than we use it for actually as a screwdriver. Uh, you'll carry a ruler with you, a pair of channel locks, and then a pair of clines, and also a speed wrench, and then hammer, and a crescent wrench. I noticed quite a few ropes on you. You want to explain what all those are for? Yeah, so this is your primary fall restraint here that you use. There's also many different kinds of these that you can get, different styles. Mine happen to have the handles on them. And then this one here is used for if you're transitioning over an obstacle, you'll put this over and then unhook your first one you had on and then put that over that and then you keep moving up. You can keep that out of the way unless we need it. We come to the pole, get clipped around it. Get this adjusted to where it's tight because having this tight can ensure that if you do slip out, which I'll show you that, that it's going to catch you. And then you'll want having your arm here about touching the pole there. So I need to come in a little bit and get right there. So, so you just trust in a rope is all. Yep. And you just gotta trust your equipment. And as long as you inspect it and make sure everything's still good on it and nothing's worn out, you're always gonna be good to go. So how hard do you have to stomp as you're going up? It depends on the floor you're on. Some are a lot harder than others. Some are really soft wood. So it just really depends on which pole you're climbing. And like I explained earlier, if I were to, if I, my feet were to slip out of the pole here, I can't go anywhere. It just stops you there. So no matter what height, as long as you're adjusted right, you're good to go. Perfect. Well, thank you very much. Okay, guys. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and give a pole climbing demonstration. Uh, got two of our students, Ben Mount and Elton Yarger. Both of these gentlemen are from the state of Colorado. Uh, they're going to go ahead and get geared up and do a, an actual speed climbing demonstration for you. Uh, again, we're here at our indoor lab. These, these poles are all freshly set. Uh, we've got about a year and a half out of a set of poles that we're in here. In one of our classes, uh, it was a project for them to upgrade all the poles in here to get ready to go for this fall and this winter and the spring snow season. So uh, both these gentlemen uh, are donning very similar to gear to what Dalton has. They, they both are climbing. Uh, Trent has leather, uh, steel climbers with leather pads. Uh, Elton looks like he's probably got a set of aluminum with the leather pads. You guys wear a bustling hammer or bashling belt? Okay. They're both donning bashling belts. Uh, Klein, Buckingham, Bashlin are probably the three uh, largest suppliers of lineman tools for us in this area anyway. And uh, Now, they're going to go ahead and speed climb for you, but please know that's not our main goal in the utility industry. The number one thing for us is making sure that we're always doing everything as safely as we possibly can. But being a young man, it's fun to have some competition. And so they're gonna go ahead and demonstrate that. Uh, these are all brand new poles. Anytime that we get ready to climb poles that are suspect, we always typically hammer test them here at the lab, especially the ones that are outdoors. Uh, they're both gonna take a minute, get themselves set get their spacing right, check their arm placement so that they're close to that 30 degree angle. And then when they're both ready, they're gonna give me a thumbs up and I'm gonna count down for them. Okay. 
guys ready? All right, on three. One, two, three. Now they're both climbing with the hitchhiking method and OSHA has mandated 100% fall restraint uh, to the utility industry. <clears throat> Where you really make up a lot of time is you can see how large the steps you can take coming down the pole. That's really where the speed part comes in. It's a controlled movement up and just as fast as you can go down. So guys, good job. That was a nice safe climb. Appreciate that. Okay, if anybody has any questions for us, please feel free to uh, jump in with Jolene. Uh, we'd be more than happy to answer anything for you at this time. Thank you. Thanks so much, Shane and Conacher. That was fun to watch. Um, I like how fast they go. I've tried to climb that pole and it they make it look so easy. It is really not that easy. Um, so what I'm gonna do next is I am going to get with Chandler here and he's gonna help me get into this bucket truck. This is the outside lab that you're seeing out here. Um, you can see it's very spacious, all the um, equipment that you would need. Um, so I'm going to jump into this bucket truck and we're going to see how high we can get and give you a bird's eye view. So uh, right now Cole's going to take you back out into the main room so that we can get some information about um, the outlook of the industry from the um, city of Scotts Bluff, Mr. Kirby Bridge. <laughs> Hello, it's my turn again. <laughs> um, I would like to introduce to you um, Kirby Bridge, um, from, who's an advisory board member to our Powerline program. And he's going to talk to you this afternoon for just a few minutes about the industry outlook and um, what uh, future jobs and good things like that are happening. Kirby, this is for you. Can you put these on? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay, so this is this is new to me here. I thought I was just supposed to come here and answer questions. But um, I guess the biggest thing is, is this school gives all the participants an opportunity to get the training they need to basically uh, have an entry level position with a REA or a municipality or a contractor. Um, most places do not like to hire people right off the street anymore. They want them to have at least some training. And this is a very good hands-on um, start at the ground line, work your way up training program. Uh, as far as in the future, I mean, these guys, if they're willing to work hard and travel for sure, they can get a job about anywhere. Um, they may not be able to get a job in their own hometown right away, but if they're willing to travel around the country and contract or work somewhere else, the chances of being able to move back home when somebody retires or whatever is is real high. I mean, there's retirements all the time in the, in the power line I and mean, there's a lot of linemen are getting older and leaving and so there's openings. Um, and as example, I mean, at the City of Alliance, I'm the electric superintendent for the City of Alliance, and we have seven linemen, six of them have graduated from this school here in Alliance. Um, they're all hometown guys. So they didn't all start with the City of Alliance. They went elsewhere and worked. And then when there was an opening, they applied and uh, with through their hard work and their commitment, they, they got hired back on at home. Now, whether they'll stay, I don't know. I hope so. We, like I said, we've got a really good crew but they've, they're getting a lot of training and they start in as an, as an apprentice. And then anywhere you go, that's pretty much where you're gonna start. And then you just move up through testing and hands-on training. And then you get to be a journeyman over time. It usually takes at least four years 
Um, but it'll be a good, it's a good entry level position and this is a great place to get the hands on to, to start it. Um, I don't know what else I'm supposed to say, I guess. If you have some questions, I'd be more than willing to try and answer them. Oh, that's me. Um, <laughs> this is new for me too, Kirby. So thank you for being here. One of the um, questions we get a lot is, um, what are the, what can a, 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 um, an apprentice expect to earn? What is a, a salary range that they might be able to earn? We've heard anywhere from 45 to 65,000 a year, but that also depends upon what community they're, they're working in. Is that still tr true today? Yeah, I, I, I think it depends on what they want to do, where they want to go. Um, I would say it's probably more from the 40 to 60 range. Um, they're going to start out at the bottom of the barrel and work your way up. But with hard work and not too much time, they're going to move up and it's going to, their pay is going to be, it's, it's, it's good pay after you get started in the industry. Mm -hmm. Well, I think um, if somebody's starting out at 40,000 and they're um, just graduating from high school right before they start the program, that's a heck of a lot of money for a 19 year old, a 20 year old. And I still think that's a heck of a lot of money for anybody, um, regardless of their age. And so um, you are a member of the advisory board. And if you could um, share a little bit of what does the role of the advisory board, the power line construction and maintenance advisory board play um, with our program? Well, the advisory board was put together to kind of get the program started. And we have two or th two to four meetings a year with uh, the, the instructors. And we just kind of tell them what, what we're looking for and what we've seen out there in the industry changing and adding and subtracting and kind of what we want out of employees. And they just kind of take our input and fit it in where they can. Great, we have one of the uh, question from one of our folks. Um, what do you look for when you're hiring um, an apprentice or hiring for a lineman? I gotta do something, this is echoing terrible in here. These are echoing terrible. Can oh. I just take them off? Mm -hmm. yeah. So I guess the, the biggest thing I look for is a hard worker, somebody that's gonna be at work every day or if they're not, they've got a good reason to not be there. But the hard worker and somebody that's willing to learn, willing to listen, willing to take directions, and willing to be safe. I mean, this is all about safety is number one. But if you show up and you're willing to work, you've got your tools, you're ready to go to work every day. I mean, that is what the industry wants is somebody that's willing to work. Nice. Are there any other questions? Um, I, here's a question for you, um, Kirby. What is usually the length of a career of a, of a journeyman or a journeywoman? Well, <laughs> I mean, speaking, you start out as an apprentice, you move up to a journeyman, and then over time, I mean, if the positions are open, I mean, you can move on up into like the foreman's position and then the, into the maybe the engineering part or the staking part or something like that and then on up into management. So, I mean, it can be a full career. I mean, you can have 30 or 40 years easily in the in the industry. I mean, there's places that you need that. I mean, meter technicians, SCADA technicians, I mean, all that is needed. So, I mean, there's always openings, not always, but there's openings in not just doing climbing poles every day, but there's other openings and positions that need to be filled too. So it can be a full, full career. Nice. <laughs> um, well, it depends where you're at. If you're working for a contractor, it's going to be better pay. Um, they pay more. They work harder. They travel more, so they pay their have to pay their guys more. Um, 
you should be able to be 10 years in, you should be able to be looking in the $30 an hour plus range pretty easily. Um, 30 to uh, 30 to 35, I would think with probably any REA or most municipalities would be in that range for an experienced good hand should be, would be relatively close. Great, thank you. Any other questions? Um, one is, is there a pretty good job demand? Yes, sir. There there's, there's good demand. Like I said earlier, it may not be um, in your hometown where you came from at the, at the present, but yeah, if you're willing to travel, there's contractors that have come to this school in the spring and they'll hire every, every guy, that, every person that graduates but you have to travel, but there's opportunity for, if you're willing to put the work in, put the hours in and be willing to work when you get out, there's opportunities all over with this profession. Nice. Anything else before we go on to our next demo? Okay, here's another question. Is this a future proof degree and could anything replace it? Is that for me? <laughs> well, it's no. It, it, is there proof? I mean, there's gonna, there's always gonna need to be linemen. I mean, and the way I see it, the way from what I can see in the future, anyway. I mean, robots can't necessarily do what we do. I mean, be able to think on your feet, fix the problem, do the hands-on. I don't see it being replaced anytime in the future by anybody other than. I mean, things are getting automated, things are getting easier and better, but no, we're, we're gonna need linemen forever. I mean, there's gotta be people that are willing to put the power line in, whether it's overhead or underground or whatever, there's gotta be manpower to put the put the stuff in place. Okay, I need to unmute. Um, we will have um, questions and answers at the end. Um, with our students, and we will have um, Shane and Quentin helping us, and it, um, Kirby as well. So um, I appreciate all those good questions. Um, if if uh, we're ready to move on to the out to Debbie, I'm see I'm new at this out to Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so here I am again, guys. We are out in the bucket truck. It is chilly up here. So I'm just gonna give you a quick idea of what it's like to be, uh, Chandler, what do you think? We're about 60, 65 feet. 65 feet in the air. This facility is located on 11 acres of property. And that building right there is where the lovely Gretchen and Mr. Kirby are in. This building over here is our indoor lab with the classroom where the rest of the guys are at. And to give you a, an idea, if you have weak stomachs, you may want to look away for a second, but you can see how far high we are up in the air. So it's beautiful out here. Really cool to be up so high in the air. So hopefully that gives you an idea of what it would feel like. Uh, you can see that they have different um, heights on these poles. Um, those ones you said are about 35, is that right? Those are 40. Those big ones are 40 out there, 35 is here, and then those big far ones over there are about 65. So it would be as if you were way up there on top, this is what you would see. So, Debbie? Oops, yes. Hey Debbie, this is Gretchen. Yes. Did this, did this. Unmute. Um, did the students um, erect all of those poles? Um, Chandler, do you happen to know, um, she was asking if the students um, were the ones that erected all the poles. Yes. Yep, so she, I guess at the, at the beginning of the year, is that kind of what, what happens? That's one of the first things they do is they get the pleasure of uh, digging and erecting the poles that they will be climbing on the rest of the, the, rest of the year. So. Um, they know that they're nice and, and sturdy and they don't have any questions as to if they're going to fall down. And if they do, that was their fault, I suppose. <laughs> so we're going to take it back over to Conagher and Shane, who are going to show you um, 
heaven forbid something should happen. Um, but these guys would come in and help do a pull top rescue for an emergency situation. So um, once again, Cole's gonna take you to a breakout room. So just click that yes button and don't forget to be asking questions. You guys are doing great. Facility. I'm here with Elton Yarger of Stratton, Colorado, and Elton is getting ready to demonstrate a pull top rescue for us. Uh, as Kirby had spoke earlier, this is a really dangerous line of work. Safety is second to none here, but there's so many factors uh, that are out of our immediate control. Uh, you know, the weather plays an important role in, in things age of poles plays another big role in it. The age of our workforce plays another big role in it. Uh, so what we do here in Alliance and any company will do is they will have pull top and bucket truck rescue training. And the reason is, is when you're up working energized lines, if somebody would happen to contact the energized line and get electrocuted, we need to get them down in a rescue situation. And if they happen to uh, lose consciousness or maybe we have somebody that has a heart attack or a stroke in the air or is diabetic and goes into a coma or shock, we, there, we have a set amount of time where we need to get a victim down. Uh, typically within four minutes, somewhere between four and six minutes to try to alleviate any issues with brain damage uh, from lack of oxygen to the brain. And so here in Alliance, we mandate that our students be able to do a pull top rescue in under four minutes. And if I remember right, I think everybody uh, out of the 25 students that we currently have, I believe everybody was able to do it in under two and a half minutes. And so that's really remarkable for us. And I just, that's a great testament to the quality students that we get here at WNCC. People come to this program, they buy into it. The men and women that are here understand the importance uh, and the role that they play in, in safety and in saving people's lives. So Elton is getting geared up right now. He's been doing that in the background. Uh, here in just a minute, Connor will be able to zoom up. We have got a mannequin that is mounted and tied up around one of our cross arms. So that is the area that we would have electrical wires typically on a primary distribution pole. And so this is kind of what we're signifying. And so the biggest thing for us is to be sure that we don't end up with two victims in a rescue situation. So Elton, uh, again, with a victim already on the pole, the pole should be inspected, should be in good shape. We know it should be safe to climb. If the victim is cleared of the electrical lines or the fuse blew, or we were able to de-energize the line and ground it, that then allows us to get up uh, and do that rescue. And in this instance, uh, we're mocking that the line is de-energized. And so Elton, whenever you're ready, again, Elton's gonna do a controlled descent, but yet try to do it as quickly as possible. Again, one victim is all we want in this situation. All right, Elton. So Elton is climbing with one of our standard hand lines. We run with a half inch diameter uh, rope. And we use half inch rope here because we need it for the strength of the tools and equipment that we handle. And that also is the minimum size that we wanna use in a rescue situation because we need to make sure that any equipment that we use is strong enough to support the victim that we're trying to rescue. So naturally, before we make any attempt at a rescue, we're going to assess the situation, make sure that everything is safe for the people on the ground and the people trying to do the rescue. We are going to uh, check, call, and care. Okay, we're going to call for help. And then we're gonna go up and start helping the victim. 
Now there's various ways to do a rescue situation and we teach several here at, in Alliance at WNCC. Uh, depending on where the students end up going to work, their company is gonna specify what they would prefer that they use. And so in this instance, Elton is using a hitch method, uh, friction hitch over the cross arm. So he's got it wrapped around twice. He is tying the rope around the victim's torso as high up underneath their arms as possible. And that alleviate, that, that ensures that we have the majority of the victim's weight hanging down. Uh, the rope, he's tying a knot in the front of the victim's chest. And we wanna to try to get that knot typically within a fist width from their chest to where the knot is. And that ensures the safety of the rope not being tied too loosely and sliding over the victim's arms on their way down. So he's ensuring that his rope is tight. He is getting himself and his fall line uh, rope in a position and he's getting ready to now cut the victim's uh, scare strap. Now you can see we have a controlled descent. We're trying to let the victim down as slowly as possible. Tyler Lentz from Scotts Bluff, Nebraska is at the base of the pole, getting ready to receive the victim. We know that the victim has been up and very likely could be in shock or have even more serious problems than that. So we wanna to try to do the best that we can to get him controlled, get him set down and get him in a position to treat for shock and start with our care. Now, our mannequin is much less than desirable to handle. As you can see, he's pretty roughed up. So Tyler's having a little bit of trouble getting him positioned. He's checking now uh, for whether he has airway obstructions or whatever might be the problem. Okay. All right. And that's pretty well how we do a pull top rescue. So if uh, Conger, if you want to pan back up there, Elton's going to go ahead and start taking the ropes off the hand line or excuse me, the hand line off the cross arm uh, again. He's going to control the hand line on his way down. We wouldn't want to drop the hand line, hit uh, another employee that's down on the ground, cause another accident. And again, in a controlled situation, remember Elton was one of our speed climbers. Now he's just kind of taking it easy coming down. There he has to adjust his belt a little bit. As the students ascend and descend the pole, poles are naturally fatter at the ground line. So when they go and do their uh, inspection to be sure that they have their 30 degree angle or that their fist is just rubbing the pole, as they ascend the pole, the pole gets smaller. And so typically at least one time, a lot of times twice as they're ascending and descending the pole, they have to adjust their belts on the way up or the way down to make sure that they have the proper angle. If they don't adjust their belts, the 100% fall restraint device that people climb with won't grab the pole properly and it'll just allow you to slide down the pole. All right. All right, Debbie, we're gonna head back to you. Unmute. All right, so thank you so much, Shane, and uh, for everybody for showing us that really cool rescue. Um, right now, what I'm going to show you, we are outside at our main lab. Um, and I'm going to show you, this is the inside, the indoor lab. So we have a classroom here for students to do workbook and to um, learn their techniques and everything before they get out there. And then here is the main lab where you guys have been seeing everybody do all of the really cool presentations. Thanks so much, guys. Appreciate it. So we are going to head back into Gretchen and she's going to give you some information about our admissions process, applying for WNCC and specifically for the Powerline program. And I'll see you in a little bit. Thank you, Debbie. Sorry, Gretchen, I had left the into the breakout room. I didn't hear what you said. 
Oh, I can talk. Okay, this is my first time again with everybody else. Um, thank you. Um, one of the things um, I want you all to know is that lab that Debbie just showed you is heated in the winter. So if it's snowing and, and blizzarding out there, you can still do your classwork and you can still climb. Um, now I'm going to um, share my screen. Um, I just want to point out, yeah, I was pretty jealous that I was outside there during all of my presentations while well, they got a stick in the indoor lab, but um, that is not the case when uh, the actual work gets done. Everybody's outside, but um, yes, it's very nice and toasty in there, so um, you don't have to freeze. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to share my screen right now um, so you all can see, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the admissions process. Um, let me fix something here. Um, but we are glad you are here. Um, and um, we do live our mission statement that WNCC assures learning opportunities for all, enriching lives, invigorating communities, and creating futures. And that is exactly what we are doing with our power line construction and maintenance program. Um, well, why am I not getting my screens? Um, hang on for a technical difficulty. How do I get out of this? Stop sharing? Okay. Now, here's, here's where I am. Share screen. Is this it? I had the other one up. Okay. All right, we're just going to keep on going. I mean, yeah. Okay, um, thank you again for being here. And we want to help you um, reach your educational goals as far as being a Powerline student. And um, maybe next year, one of you might be in that photo. Um, nope, we don't want to do that. Um, there, are, there are a couple of ways to be accepted to the Powerline program. And you can do this simultaneously. You can do it one, uh, you know, apply for admission first. Um, that's one of the first things you can do and you are accepted to WNCC. When we know of your um, interest in Powerline, we will send you the Powerline packet. And that Powerline packet includes um, information about um, placement testing. It includes information about financial aid, um, specifically for our Powerline students, but it also provides you with the five documents that we need um, from you um, to evaluate in order to be accepted to Powerline. And one of those documents is a copy of your um, driver's license. Another one is a copy of your medical insurance card. Um, you'll need to have a Department of Transportation physical um, and provide those results, as well as completing the uh, general assumption of risk and liability, um, and then also a copy, a uh, signed um, driving record authorization form. And that is to allow us to check your driving record to make sure that you are able to drive our vehicles on property and off property. Um, so apply for admission and complete the packet. We have some folks apply for admission and then complete the packet. We've had other students um, or potential students complete the packet first and then apply for admission. Either way you do it, we need to have both of those in order for us to evaluate your packet in order to accept you. And then when you attend um, Powerline New Student Orientation, and that's usually held in um, March because classes begin in May, um, classes will begin at the end of May. And so it takes a couple of months to order your tools, be measured for your equipment, um, but also register for classes. And you'll have a chance, if we are allowed to do it in person next spring, um, meet your classmates. And, um, but that's all explained in the packet. Um, and I do want to, um, if you want to visit our Powerline Lab, please note, that right now our visits will have to be virtual because of the increase in COVID cases um, in this region. And so we want to host you, we can do them virtually. So you meet with Shane, you meet um, with our financial aid director, 
Um, you can meet with um, the academic advisor who works with our, our first um, semester Powerline students. Um, have a chance to meet with Conagher Stumpf, our cameraman, who's also an admissions counselor, who also works with our Powerline students. Um, if things change, we would most um, welcome you to campus um, to have a face-to-face -face visit with our students and with Shane, um, but you would have to adhere to our COVID requirements and masks are, um, I did not change this, they are required while on campus. I did not change that, um, but they are. And so please know that we are assuring, um, taking safety precautions with um, keeping things clean. Um, when the students leave the classroom, they're wiping down their desks and all sorts of good stuff like that. So um, we are taking this seriously. And then if you have any questions at all, um, there's um, uh, my name and my staff. Um, but if you contact us at powerline at wncc.edu, we will be more than happy to um, answer questions. Um, we can send the packet via um, US Postal Service as well as email it to you as a PDF. But please do not hesitate to um, ask any questions, contact us, but also know that our Powerline program, admission to it, is on a first come first serve basis. Uh, right now, we have a limit of 25 students, and once we reach that for the program that starts in the summer of 2021, um, there we will start a waiting list, and if anybody accepted to the program um, decides to change their um, educational plans, then they would, um, we would take the first person off the wait list. Um, so we'll get to that when we can, but no, um, I encourage you. Um, if you are interested to get your applications in sooner rather than later, as well as completing the packets. And um, so we will need a complete packet with those five documents in order to um, review it and accept you um, for admission. So I'm going to stop sharing and see if there is, um, if we have any questions. Oh, I see a question. Um, um, oh, that was just someone guiding me how to share a PowerPoint. Okay, I'm new at this, but thank you so much. Um, um, and we're going into now, I'm going to, um, were there any questions about the pole top rescue? Okay, well then I'm going to turn it back over to Debbie. Um, for the, um, and Jolene for the questions and um, answers from our students. And if our students can introduce themselves, Debbie will take you through that. Thanks so much. All right, so welcome back. We are inside with our power line. Um, Miss, I have Jolene here that is gonna be monitoring our chat. And so we're wearing our masks since we're closer than six feet. But across from me, we have our current Powerline students. Um, so we are gonna start here to the my right. And um, if you guys would like to take turns introducing yourselves, just remember if you're not speaking to put mute on um, so that we're trying not to echo too much, all right? All right, so I'm Elton Yarger, uh, graduated from Stratton High School in 2019. Uh, one thing I really like about the program is uh, all the hands-on work that we do and the time that we spend outside. And one thing that I wish I knew before we came into the program was I wish I could have just met some of the students around here before I actually got to uh, go to class with them and get to know them better. Hey guys, um, I'm a Dalton prop. I graduated Scotts Bluff High School in 2012. Um, one thing I like about the program is, uh, I mean, we're outside a lot of the time and you're just out there working and learning stuff every day. And uh, one thing that I wish I knew before I joined was maybe just like the different options, uh, tools and stuff we bought because I just kind of 
randomly just had had them order whatever everyone else was ordering. Um. Hi, I'm Tyler Lentz. Um, I graduated from Scottsbluff High School in 2012. I'd say uh, my favorite thing about the program is being um, pretty high up in the air and working on the poles. It's it's pretty fun, especially when it's a little breezy. It's really nice and relaxing. Um, one thing I wish I would have known is how expensive the tool was and which ones were a little better than the others. <clears throat> All right, we're going to take just a second. Um, that was a very great segue, Tyler, to a question that we had, which was how expensive are the tools and is there financial aid available to help? So Shane, if you could um, help us answer that question, that would be great. Hi, everybody. Shane Holman, Powerline Instructor here at WNCC. I'm going to say on average, uh, for some nice quality tools, I would probably somewhere in that $2,000 range. And that includes all the hand tools uh, that Dalton demonstrated earlier. It includes uh, the climbing equipment that you'll need, climbers, tool belt, uh, your 100% fall restraint, and your secondary rope. So that's, that's, a, that's a pretty good average. Uh, you know, we've had some students here this year that were family friends with some linemen, uh, with some other companies. And so they were able to get outfitted. I think the one told me just two or three days ago, I think cost him about $150 is all, is all that it took there. So uh, the, the amount of money that you can spend really is endless, but uh, we do recommend uh, trying to buy as good a quality tools that you can afford because from my point of view, I've been in this for well over 20 years. I still have a lot of the original tools that I started with all those years ago. And like most things in life, you typically get what you pay for. But we also understand that everybody comes from a different background. And you know, a lot of, a lot of people want to try to cash flow coming to college. And so you, know, you buy what you can afford. We make do with whatever you have. And the great thing is a lot of the companies uh, probably just like the City of Alliance and a lot of them that I'm familiar with is once you show up with your original equipment in time, they typically end up replacing it for you. And so uh, that helps in the end to, to, to save your own personal equipment. So that's about all I know on that. All right, great. Thank you. Um, so next, if we can have Chandler, if you want to go ahead and Oh, I just wanted to point out, so um, the financial aid portion, um, if you are receiving any sort of refund from your financial aid, you can use that for your equipment and your tool. So I just wanted to point that out. I'm not sure if you um, pointed that out, but we'll go ahead and go to Chandler. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Chandler Stinson. Uh, I graduated from Alliance High School in 2019. Um, so I really love going outdoors and working on everything and uh, just the challenges that you have to overcome when you're up there in the wind and the temperature. Um, the one thing I wish I'd known about was to buy a backpack instead of a little side bag for your tools. It kind of gets annoying once in a while, but you overcome that. So that's all I got. Hi everybody, I'm Trent Mel. I graduated from Brush High School in 2017. Uh, one thing I like about the program is that we get to work outside every day and all the people you get to meet. Uh, one thing I wish I would have known is kind of just a cost thing, how much it costs to come here, but financial aid is really helpful, so that helped a lot. All right, thanks. So, all right, guys, we are going to be in the chat for a little bit. Um, so if you guys have questions, any specific questions, um, one question we did have, and um, I'll throw this over, actually, I'm not sure, maybe to Shane or uh, maybe to Mr. Bridges. Um, the question was asked, 
do any of the employers supply tools, personal protective gear, equipment, things like that um, upon hire? If, you, if one of you could answer that, that'd be great. Hi everybody, Shane Holman here again. Uh, yes, T typically from the time that I've been in the line work industry, typically you're required to show up to your first job with everything that's required. And then as it wears out or breaks, uh, if, if more modern equipment are needed, typically the majority of the employers will replace that uh, on their dime. Now, I, I, I can't speak to a lot of the contractors in the area. A lot of them may require you to show up with your tools and then continue to use your own tools uh, and replace them as needed. But I, I feel like a lot of the REAs, uh, the investor owned utilities, municipals, as long as you can show up with the first set, pretty well everything after that they replace. Uh, OSHA mandated several years ago again with 100% fall restraint and also FR clothing and a rubber glove, or excuse me, a leather glove policy. And so a lot of that stuff now is provided uh, by the companies that you go to work for. And so that's a huge uh, benefit to the employee, but also a large cost to the employer. And that's, I, you know, I heard Kirby talking a little while ago about the importance of finding the right people for the job, because there is an enormous investment that the companies make uh, when they do hire you. You know, a lot of companies spend several thousand dollars just on FR clothing for their employees. A lot of companies will provide different styles of boots. Uh, you know, if it's a company that does a lot of tree trimming, they may provide chainsaw cutting boots for you. If you go to work for a transmission company and they climb a lot of steel lattice towers, they may provide a particular style of grounding boot for you. If it's a wood crew, they may provide a set of uh, pole climbing boots for you. So there's an enormous investment that's made for employees. And uh, one thing that I did want to, uh, I'm sitting here across from these five gentlemen that are helping us and introducing themselves to you. One thing that I know I've spoken to several of them about and a lot of the other students uh, that aren't here today is that I think a lot of them probably wish that they were in better shape when they started this program. And it is extremely demanding. You know, the majority of the work that we do uh, here at the college is off the pole. So they're climbing with the additional weight. You know, Dalton made a statement of 20 to 25 pounds of extra tools that you're climbing with the gear. And, you know, you can imagine uh, if you carry bags of water softener salt up down the stairs for your mom and dad, down into the utility room, you know, those bags are 40 pounds. So if you're constantly carrying weight up and down, you know, up to 40, 45 foot high on the poles that we do, uh, you can see where it's a huge benefit to be in decent physical condition when you come here. Because within the first week, you pretty well find out, you know, how hard it is. Uh, when I was on the transmission cruise, still working before I, I came here to be an instructor, my tool belts with all of our tools, uh, the bolts that we had to carry to do the lattice work on the steel, and then I, I wore suspenders back in those days. I was just under 40 pounds of weight that I carried, and that didn't include climbers um, because on steel, you know, you're just using uh, regular tower boots. So when we would do woodwork, then I would, I would have to add in the extra weight of the climbers as well. So I think that's something that I would like everybody that's uh, zooming in today to be aware of, is try to come in here in the best physical condition that you can. I think it'll benefit you in the long run. Thank you. Thank you, Shane. So I can personally attest to the, um, difficulty of climbing up that pole. My very first time out here on this pile on that, I was determined that I was gonna make it to the top. And I did make it to the top about 10 minutes after I started. So um, I had to take some breaks. I had to take some breathers. And luckily those those um, ropes, you know, you can, you can stop for a minute. So yes, I, I can totally 
get the the difficulty and my legs were incredibly sore i had bruises and everything the next day um but it was one of the coolest things i had done so again if you have a chance um uh, maybe in the springtime or when the restrictions lift up to come and visit this power line program i highly highly recommend it you will not be disappointed um if there's any last minute chat questions make sure you jump in there and get those um because we're just about to sign off Thank you again so much for joining us. I hope that you enjoyed your day. Thank you for being patient with us. Um, we had a lot of fun today. We were nervous, but I think we pulled it off. So hopefully you enjoyed yourself and uh, we look forward to the next open house um, for behavioral health, which will be happening in a couple of weeks. So if you're interested in that as well, we'll see you then. <laughs> All right, bye. Hi, Debbie. Thanks, Debbie. And thanks everybody for being a part of it and especially our students. And Shane, um, we couldn't do this without you. Um, again, if you want to receive more information, if you already haven't received information, it's Powerline, all one word, P-O-W-E-R-L-I-N-E -E at WNCC.edu. And we will get information to you and uh, work with you through the process. And um, I do want to say to Tyler and Trent and Chandler and Elton and Dalton, um, it was a pleasure working with you this past year, um, getting you to this point, and now you're in your second semester, and to see the confidence that you have and um, in what you're doing and, and in your climbing. Um, I'm just, I'm so proud of you all and, and so proud that you were part of today. So if there isn't anything else, um, I'll turn it over to, oh, well, let me see if, can Cole, can you show your face so people know what you look like? No. Yes. Um, Cole is our producer. He's our admissions counselor on our Sydney campus. And so um, if Cole, show your picture, Cole. There's Cole. Just okay. wave. And then Conagher uh, was our cameraman and you saw him a little bit. And I think he's going to try and get on here for a minute. And then Jolene, our chat master. Um, there's Conagher and Jolene, if you can. Um, there you are. So I'm so proud of my staff and, and Debbie. So here we are and we are here ready to work with you and take you to the next step so you can reach new heights on those power line poles. <laughs> and on that corny note, I mean, look at Trenton, you think I'm funny. Um, and on that note, I will let you go and thanks so much for joining us. <laughs>